Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're talking about scientific conferences. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about scientific conferences. We're three years out from the start of the pandemic, and things are getting back to normal-ish. People are starting to return to in-person classes, going back to the office, chasing wheels of cheese down a hill. You know, normal things. And of course, people are starting to be more comfortable with traveling again. With all of this comes a return of the scientific conference. And for a lot of pandemic era students, this is a first. So what is a scientific conference? Why are they important? And what can you expect to find when you get there? Scientific conferences are the place where all areas of a field get together to discuss that topic. So researchers, academics, scientists, and experts all sharing their latest research findings, exchanging ideas, and discussing the most recent developments and challenges. In movies, gatherings of scientists are always at these high-tech venues with huge audiences to scientists announcing their big breakthrough for time travel or unveiling their robot or something. It's in a room that looks something like this, but in reality, conferences usually happen in rooms that look more like this. And while scientists do highlight their recent discoveries, we're not usually as shocking as movies would make them out to be. Rather, conferences provide a platform for scholars to present their research to a broader audience and receive feedback from other experts or to connect with those in other disciplines whose ideas may overlap their own. They can also make researchers aware of new collaborative partners and explore potential opportunities for funding or further research. A big part of it is sharing ideas and finding others that you can network with. One hallmark of the scientific conference is the keynote speeches and presentations by leading experts in the field. They are usually the high point of the conference and take place during the time planners expect the most attendees to be at the conference and could even be scheduled during a lunch or dinner. Unlike most presenters who submit proposals for approval to present at the conference, keynote speakers are invited directly by the conference hosts and are usually paid to speak at the event. They are big names in the field, and typically keynote speeches are free to attend. So if you can, try to schedule time to attend. Another event worth attending are panel discussions. During these discussions, a group of experts shares their thoughts on a specific topic or issue related to the conference theme. It's pretty neat to have top experts sharing their thoughts like that, almost like a sneak peek into what would usually be a private conversation. and. Oftentimes, they'll make connections that could be helpful or useful to you personally. Attendees may have the opportunity to ask questions and participate in that discussion. So if you go, make sure you're prepared. But there's more to do at conferences besides just listen and ask questions. What conferences are really great at is highlighting the work that you've been doing. Most students attending conferences are doing so because they have been active in a scientific lab of some sort under the supervision of a trained researcher. You've been working on projects and collecting data. Now it's finally your chance to show it off. The main way most students get involved is through poster presentations. Before going to the conference, you or your supervisor will need to apply to be in the session. Then you'll compile the whole project into a large format poster. The poster will have all the background info on your project and any data you've already collected. At the poster session, you'll line up in a giant room or even arena with all the other presenters. That way, other conference attendees can read your posters and talk to you about the work you're doing. It's really a more heads are better than one situation. Other researchers can help you find flaws in your project or lead you down paths for exploration that you haven't thought of yet. The important thing is not to let the other researchers scare or intimidate you. Remember, they're on your side. They chose to come to your poster and to listen to you. Sometimes they can even help you out more than you think. 
Poster sessions often have awards or even cash prizes, which could obviously help you out a ton. Plus, you get to keep your poster at the end. You can hang it up on your mom's fridge with the look what I did in school magnet. The other way to get your work out there are presentations. These are typically shorter presentations, between 10 and 20 minutes, that allow researchers to share their findings and research in a more formal setting. There are usually several presentation sessions overlapping during a conference, so make sure to pay attention to the conference program so that you'll know when and where to find the session that you want. Presentations are more like a brief university lecture, where you'll talk in front of the attendees about the projects you've been doing. You'll have access to the media technology in the room so you can show slides or even data. Presentations are harder to do and require a lot of prep work. So if you want to apply to a conference to do one, make sure you're really ready to answer questions. Presenting at a conference is great because it builds your CV or resume, since both posters and presentations are professional accomplishments. They are a great way to showcase your work to potential graduate advisors or even employers. If you want to know more about how to share what you're doing in the world of science or more about early career preparation, make sure you subscribe to Sci vs. Sci so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! Wow, they must really love cheese. What kind of cheese even is that? What did that cheese even do to them? I want to be a cheese chaser chaser. Uh, okay, I looked it up, and it turns out it, it's not really about the cheese. <laughs>